Hi, everyone, and good evening. Welcome to the Jeff Brom Show. Here we are tonight greeting you once again on a Wednesday evening from Wolfie's Grill, Wabash Landing. And no Tim Newton tonight. I'm Rob Blackman filling in for Tim one more time here for the Coach Brom Show as Tim is on the road tonight with Purdue women's basketball, the Purdue women on the road at Illinois State uh, with women's hoops tonight. So Tim's with the women's basketball team. I'll fill in for Tim this evening talking Purdue football here with Head Coach Jeff Brom, we do have a lot to talk about tonight, as you might expect. We'll talk about the loss last Saturday in Columbus, Ohio, to the Ohio State Buckeyes. We will look ahead to this Saturday's matchup at historic Wrigley Field against the Northwestern Wildcats. And a couple of uh, Boilermaker players are going to join us today. We're going we're gonna to go uh, down in the trenches with our guest today. Offensive lineman Gus Hartwig from Zionsville will join us. And uh, Branson Dean, defensive tackle from Indianapolis, is going to be my guest. Uh, he will be one of my guests tonight as well. So we'll have Branson and Gus with us. Of course, Coach Brom will join me in just a moment. And we'll take your phone calls as well. If you would like, 1-888-246-2678. 1-888-246-2678. If you're watching us tonight on YouTube or Twitter Live, uh, Facebook Live, thank you very much for going through the effort. If you're listening on the Varsity Network app, uh, we appreciate that too. And if you're just listening the old-fashioned way on the radio, well, that works too. Again, the phone number, 1-888-246-2678. One quick thing before we take a break. Next week's Jeff Brom Radio Show will be on Tuesday night. Tuesday night, right back here at Wolfie's, but uh, we're going to move it up a day because of the uh, Thanksgiving celebration going on next week, uh, next Thursday. So next week's Coach Brom Show is next Tuesday night, not on your typical Wednesday. Uh, we will take a break. Coach Brom joins me next. It is the Jeff Brom Show, presented by the Rohrman Automotive Group from Learfield. Another brilliant performance against a top-ranked team. I'm glad to hear that she's doing well today, David Bell breaks free, and Bell will get it out to about the 47-yard line for a first. Horvath gets the carry, and he'll have a Purdue first down. Kind of the key that makes all the different looks that they'll throw at the opposing defense makes them difficult. Second and six, quickly to the outside, and Wright's able to shake free for a moment and has the first down. So they bring it back, a second and ten, saying that was an incompletion. O'Connell, this is it! Jackson Anthrop, touchdown, Boilermakers! Things to give those passers a different look. Second and two, just goes underneath the Doru, and Doru weaving his way out to the 47-yard line. Before. Second and seven, play action. And O'Connell, downfield strike, and complete to Milton Wright. And the big mistake that the offense made, he wasn't even on the field for it. Well, it was Jack Plummer who came in for that one play. Corner of the end zone. Wow! Touchdown, Thompson! Good job up front by Purdue as Williams was driven back by Karloftis. A legend now amongst some of the guys on the internet that's for sure third and ten and the completion to tj sheffield they can look at this and say yeah they're super dynamic but there have been some self-inflicted mistakes that we made as well o'connell lost the end zone and he gets it with milton wright second five o'connell swings it to horvath horvath squaring those shoulders he's been so productive this year first and goal and they're going to bring it in for a score. Did you just say as Jackson answer crosses the goal line? Maybe you need to go out on the track. Hey, welcome back, Boilermaker football fans. It is the Jeff Brom Radio Show live tonight at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Ross Age Stadium. Huge thanks to a Wolfie's Grill. They've been our home for the Jeff Brom Radio Show all season long. Rob Blackman is my name, filling in for Tim Newton. Coach Brom is alongside Coach Maybe just a quick thought on the Saturday loss at Ohio State, 59-31. We'll keep it brief because we need to, as we say in football, move on to the next game, which, of course, is Northwestern coming up Saturday. Well, we knew going into the game it was going to be a tough matchup and uh, unfortunately didn't get off to a good start. Um, you know, had a couple turnovers and a really bad punt. And uh, before you know it, uh, you know, they were striking fast. And uh, defense uh, was a little shaky at the beginning and uh, just got out of hand real early. Luckily for us, I do think uh, our guys fought hard. Um, we played to the end, and uh, after we spotted them a big lead, for the most part, you know, we, you know, I think the last 
24 points, uh, both teams scored, would, were going to be even. They were up 35 to 7 right. after that. Then right. they started to kind of play normal football and, and, and get better. But it was just unfortunate. Uh, but that's a good football team without question. I mean, uh, they've got a lot of skill, a lot of really big linemen, uh, and, and uh, they're strong in a lot of positions. And we just didn't do all the small things correctly that you need to do in order to beat a top caliber team. And let's uh, look, let's be very brutally honest here. When you're playing the team the caliber of Ohio State, they don't need any help. And we gave them a little help with those two turnovers early. Yes, we did. Uh, you know, the turnover, the fumble on offense, and the uh, you know the time we didn't re you know catch the kick was 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 not good. And then of course uh, we had about a 12 yard punt, and uh, all right. those three things happened early, and just got them off to a good start. And uh, you know, there's a lot of corrections we can make from the game, which we did. You know, we didn't just throw it away. We wanted to make sure that we analyzed it thoroughly and we used this uh, game to, to get better. There's a lot of season left to play. And in this conference, uh, every team is a, a tough matchup, no matter what the record is. Uh, you, you've got to do a lot of things right in order to win. And we know that in order for us to win against any, any team in our conference, uh, all three segments, offense, defense, special teams, uh, got to be playing uh, at a pretty high caliber and got to be clicking and doing all the small things. And uh, we just did not get that done. Let's go to our phone lines. Again, the phone call, the uh, phone number, I should say, if you'd like to uh, make, uh, make a call and visit with Coach Brom is 1-888-246-2678. Daryl from Philadelphia is calling first tonight. So, Daryl, welcome to the show. You're on with Coach Brom. Hey, Coach. How's it going? Good. How are you? Okay. First of all, I just wanted to um, congratulate you. I, we'll reflect on the game a little bit, but I think that the whole nation saw how good this actually is because – I don't believe in uh, what, what they call it, um, uh, mental wins, what they call them, when you don't actually win, but you win. Well, I don't believe them either, so uh, I'm not exactly <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. What whatever that Whatever that word <laughs> yes, is, I that's what I'm looking it. for. Yeah, you are correct. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, I, I don't believe in those type of wins, but the thing about it is this. You know, we, we know that um, – you know, we didn't do very well on defense stopping them, but then again, they couldn't stop us. And I strongly feel had we not made three errors, we probably would have came out victorious and it would have been a high-scoring game, all right? You know, what I'm looking at overall is the fact that, you know, you're taking the time over the past few years to actually build a program and not just a winning season. You know, I'm pretty sure that looking back, reflecting on some of the seasons that we probably could have made it to a bowl game had we gone ahead and threw the seniors in and stuff like that, but you were paid storm. And uh, whether all of us armchair uh, coaches, you know, when you were doing well, it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And then when, you know, we lose the game, it's off with his head. But I tell you what, I'm the biggest fan that we have out there, and I'm still hanging there with you, Coach. Well, we appreciate that. Yeah. Do you, do you, so, you um, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, do you have a question? or? Uh... Well, yeah, I, I do have a question. I was just kind of like highlighting that, right, you know, right. uh, I, I I don't know if the team realizes this, but, you know, we're on the verge of possibly, you know, we could run the table, which I strongly believe we can, because I think we could run with anybody in the nation of going, like, nine and four this year. And we've only had, like, in the history of Purdue, one ten-win season and nine nine-win seasons. So this could be number ten. And looking forward to next year. And I was just wondering if the team was, uh, you know, aware of that. I know it's a one-game season. And the biggest thing is I was just wondering if the team – how they were going to be ready for the game because I know it's going to be a weird setup at uh, Wrigley Field. And if they were going to be ready for that setup, if you guys are going to get a chance to uh, walk through and take a look at the field. Right. You know what, those are all good comments, and we appreciate uh, you supporting us and following us. And, uh, and, yes, we're going to work extremely hard to fix everything we do every week and try to come back the next week and win. And, um, you know, right now we, we've done some good things, but there's been a lot of things we've learned along the way, and uh, we just got to stay focused on trying to improve and trying to – you know, do all the small things correctly that you have to in order to win at a high level. I do think our guys uh, practice hard. Uh, they care. Uh, they want to represent themselves and their family and the university and, and do the very best job they can. And, and we have great opportunities. For us, you know, there's a lot of things as you guys can look down the road. For us, we, we really can't look beyond uh, this game, and, and we're going to really just focus on trying to improve from last week and, and get a win. And, uh, you know, what happens down the line, you know, will we'll be a – a reflection of how we do each and every week, and, and we're going to work hard at it. And, uh, you know, for us, we normally do not go to the uh, away game field uh, the, the day before the game. But, yes, you're correct. We are going to uh, drive up to Chicago and go to Wrigley and walk around the field so our guys can get an understanding of the setup and what it's going to be like uh, and get comfortable with that. And then we'll go to the, the hotel for our meetings and uh, some things like that. And the game c comes early. It's 11 o'clock uh, 
uh, local time on a Saturday morning, so we'll be getting up early, getting ready to go. But I just think it'll be an exciting uh, atmosphere for all the fans to uh, be in Wrigley Field for a football game. I know our players will be concentrating on the game, but it, when it's all said and done afterwards, they'll be happy that they played in a historic venue like Wrigley Field, and uh, it'll be an exciting game. I was lucky enough to play, uh, excuse me, be an assistant coach, and the last time I was played there, when I was at the University of Illinois, we actually beat Northwestern. But it was a unique game. Both teams were on the same sideline and uh, in that game because it was the first time they had done it in a long time. Uh, the, the field was situated where you <laughs> you could only go one direction because the end zone was <laughs> up against the wall. This this time they've got it a little more room and it'll be a little bit more normal. But uh, both teams will be on the same sideline, which will look unique. Uh, you know, the, the, the seats are all good, but it will be a flatter type of setting like baseball games. So it'll be a little bit different. But uh, you know, Northwestern has, has played well against us, uh, and, and we have not. And they just uh, normally are a very disciplined team, and they play really good defense. They're stout up front. They run the football. They control possessions. They don't turn it over. And we're going to have to try to beat them at their own game. But it'll be a, a great matchup, and I think our guys will come ready to play. Darrell, thank you for the phone call. I think the phrase you were looking for to start that conversation was moral victory. We take no moral victories here at Purdue football. Daryl, thanks for the call. This is the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rohrman Automotive Group. We will be back right after this from Learfield. Things that makes this team so dangerous. See, they can score in transition. They can count it inside. They shoot the three over 40%. And look at the drop right there to Edie. A program that knows success. It's also Scott Nagy talked to us about. This is a tough place for us to find. And what a pass. Ivy on the step through, had it knocked away. And there is Williams with the putback and the foul. Almost every look we have seen tonight from Wright State has been contested. There is Edie with the two-hand jam. By Stefanovic. And another miss. He may very well double both of those, if not more, this season. Thompson leaves it off for Stefanovic, and he rims in another. That's back-to-back -back three. Not having confidence knocking down those shots. Grant Basile shot 48% from downtown last year. How about that fadeaway from Travion Williams showing a little finesse. Dumps it down to Travion Williams. Going to work on Basile, and he forces an errant pass from Basile, and now Ivy on the break. Step through to the cup and lays it in. And now Hunter in the front court jams it home. That Mackey Arena in the first half. And another soft touch of the paint. And first another offensive rebound. Ivy on the drive. Are you kidding me? Their eighth largest halftime lead in program history at 34 points. How about that backdoor cut and the feed from Travion Williams? In and out from Morton, a third opportunity for Williams. The Rorman Automotive Group is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brom Show. Proud partner of Purdue Athletics, Rorman Automotive Group. Boiler up and hammer down. Jeff Brom Radio Show tonight here from Wolfie's Grill on the Wabash Landing in West Lafayette. Thank you so much for joining us as we talk Boilermaker football. Again, a reminder, our show next week with Coach Brom is a Tuesday night program. Tuesday night, same time, 6 o'clock. Uh, same place, Wolfie's Grill, but it'll be on Tuesday of next week, not Wednesday. So please make a note of that. Well, let's go back to the phones, 1-888-246-2678. Uh, we have Doug in Fort Wayne joining us next. Doug, welcome to the show. You're on with Coach Brom. Hello, Coach Brom. I asked a question. I asked a question similar to this so, to Gene Cady, longtime Purdue basketball coach, but puts you in some pretty good uh, company there. So it's a real compliment, I think. Uh, since the start of this season, I've heard you speak repeatedly about how certain players care about the game. I don't remember you speaking like that about your players in your previous four years here. Now you're obviously a really competitive guy, and. As a younger coach, if you just assume that all your players wanted to compete really badly with all your players, all, the, excuse me, all your recent talk about players caring about the game, did you suddenly realize maybe midway through last season, like the Rutgers and Nebraska games, if you had some players in your team who just didn't have your will to win like you do? 
I wish you well against the Wildcats and the Hoosiers, and uh, I'll take your answer off the air. Thank you. Well, those are all good questions as well. I, I think, um, you know, we've always had a lot of really uh, caring players that uh, want to win and uh, want to do well in school and want to be good people and good students. Uh, obviously, sometimes you get some that are a little more competitive, and really it, uh, you know, they dig down deep, and when things aren't going their way, they, they get angry, want to do something about it, and, and those are the kinds that you, you really like. You want people to, uh, you know, do whatever they can to help their team win, and then when they don't, uh, you want them to kind of, you know, to affect them, and then them to kind of want to do their part to help, uh, you know, try to win and, and be competitive, and, um, you know, when you lose, it's a it's a factor of a lot of things. It's not always the players. It's sometimes coaching. Sometimes we need to coach better. We need to do things better to put our guys in a better position to succeed. And uh, throughout all of our losses throughout the, the years, it's always been a combination of a little of those things. So, you know, what we have to do as coaches is try to learn from each and every year and put our players in the best position to succeed and win and be an aggressive in our approach. And I want to work hard at it. I, you know, I, I know I spend – a whole lot of time doing it, and I want our coaches to want to spend a whole lot of time helping our guys win. And then in, in return, uh, your players normally see that you care and that you're doing everything you can and you're working extra to find a way. Then they normally respond and want to do their part. And so I just think it's a combination of all those things. Uh, you know, winning in the, in the Big Ten in this conference in football is, uh, is, is work. I mean, you've got to work at it, and uh, you can't just show up on the field and give it to your best player or two and think you're going to win. No, you've got to have all guys that are all in that are willing to do their part. It's a team game. It's physical. It's tough. Uh, you you got to get a few breaks. You got to make your breaks. And you just got to hang in there uh, when maybe the game isn't going your way and try to change that momentum fast. So just a, it's a combination of a lot of things. That's what makes the, the game of football so great. And it helps guys that play this game when they move on, you know, have success because they've been through a lot of adversity. They've been through some hard times. They've you know, uh, played some games where they get some credit and they play some games, but boy, they're they going to hear about it. And I think it's just, uh, while it's not a whole lot of fun to lose sometimes, it's healthy to go through those things so that it can drive you uh, to want to win. So I just think this year we have quite a bit of experience, especially on the defense side of the ball, that's played a lot of football. And uh, sometimes it hasn't gone their way, but because of it, they have been hungry and they want to do well. And, you know, Last week wasn't our best day on defense, but until then, we, we have done some better things, and we have uh, found ways to get better, and we've just got to continue to work at it. Now, along those same lines, Coach, uh, the caller there asking about uh, or making a comment about guys that love football. As a guy that's been in the coaching business for a long time, played collegiately and professionally, I would assume one of the common denominators of folks that have a lot of success in this sport are guys that love the game of football, right? Because there are some dog days, there are some down days, there are some tough days that come with this game, but if you love the game, that's truly in the essence what uh, can make you a, a better player, the best player you can possibly be, I guess is what I'm saying. Well, it's very important. And, uh, you know, nowadays young men are all different and uh, different things drive them and they come from different backgrounds. And, and yes, you got to love the game. Uh, but you'll get some guys that, yes, need to love it more. And then you'll get a few that, you know what, they care so much uh, and mm -hmm. it means so much to them that they sometimes press and things yeah. bother them too much. You just have to have a, you know, we want our guys to have balance. We want our guys to want to excel and be great at football, but I want them to excel in the classroom. I want them to be really good people. I want them to, you know, do things outside of the game and develop relationships beyond football where they become a well-rounded person and every little thing that happens doesn't really bother them. Uh, so it's just a, an extreme combination of, of people that you're you're going to coach, and when you're coaching a football team, you have close to 115 guys on a team, and you you got to deal with a lot of personalities and make sure that you know you you show them that you care, and then you're going to do everything to help them have success, uh, and not only football, but you know in the game of life. And I think our guys uh, to this to this point uh, this year have, have really tried hard, and, and that's all we can ask. We'll visit more with Coach Brom when we come back to Wolfie's Grill right here in West Lafayette. Again, if you'd like to visit with the coach, 1-888-246-2678. It's the Coach Brom Show, presented by Rorman Automotive Group from Learfield. Ball played through. Steffens. Patrick able to disrupt. Ball is kicked off of Patrick and recovered by Bova. Away by the defense. In Chicago, they play defense per the Ramblers. And that ball is dangerous. Opportunity and just outside. They find Griffith. Griffith 1v1. Uses the scissor move. 
gets free. Left foot, fires it off, and it's in! The Boilermakers are going to the second round of the NCAA Women's College Cup off of the left foot of Sarah Griffith. A brilliant, curving shot. The game of basketball has always meant more here, and it's always meant everything to me. It's been my passion, my obsession, my first love, and the thing I've always been best Katie at. Gerald's averaging five and a half assists a game. And Gerald gets the offensive board, puts it right back up and in. I learned something along the, the way. The individual honors really mean nothing to me. If you surround yourself with greatness, you can become great I mean, yourself. No one can take the state championship away from us, and it's just awesome. A state title, Indiana Miss Basketball, Big Ten champion, the Elite Eight, the WNBA, national championship, all these dreams realized. Basketball has taken me around the world, and now it's brought me back home. Back to the greatest school in the greatest state in the country, the Boilermaker State. Now it's time for the next chapter, for new dreams and a return to greatness. The head coach for your Boilermakers, Katie Gerald! Let's ride, y'all. Welcome back to the Jeff Rom Radio Show, live tonight at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Ross Age Stadium. Huge thanks to Wolfie's Grill taking care of us tonight, as they always do. Of course, you can catch Coach Brom here Wednesday nights normally, but again, a reminder, next Tuesday night for the Coach Brom Show as we will be in the uh, Thanksgiving week with, uh, with our Boilermakers next week. Back to the phones we will go. Again, the phone line is 1-888-246-2678. Joey from Lafayette is calling in next. So, Joey, welcome to the show. You are on with Coach Brom. Hi, thank you. Uh, I've heard you address our four punks a couple of times, and I feel like that's been a key theme throughout the year, considering we're last in the Big Ten and third to last in net average in the entire country. I was wondering what steps we're taking to alleviate that. I know against Notre Dame, you brought in uh, the other freshman punter, and he seemed to do pretty well. So I've just wondered why we haven't seen him since. Once again, a very good point. And, yes, uh, you know, I, I want to be really good on special teams, and uh, we're working hard at it, actually. And, uh, you know, what we have is we have a scholarship punter um, in, in Jack Ansel that's coming here, and uh, really he's a true freshman. He's a little bit older. He's come from Australia. And uh, he's got a strong leg. And uh, if he came out to practice every day, you know what? <laughs> he kicks it really well. Now, not all the time. And he's not as consistent as you want. But, boy, he can really kick the football. And, uh, you know, he, he does care as well. You know, he's a guy when he, when he doesn't do things well, he gets upset and angry. And, uh, and that's actually a good quality. He probably does press too much. And for whatever reason in games, he has uh, not performed as well. And uh, you're correct. Uh, we had Brendan Cropsey come in. Uh, when that wasn't going well. And unfortunately, he got sick and has been out for multiple weeks, and that's why you haven't seen him. So what we've done this week is uh, we've opened this competition fully back up, and uh, we've worked really hard to this point on punting and uh, consistency, and it's been an open competition. And uh, we're going to you know, start the, the, the best kicker that performs this week in practice and to be – even more honest, uh, if that person doesn't punt it the way we want, the next one's coming in. And, uh, you know, really that's how we have it at every position. I tell people all the time, you know, a good quarterback, we do the same thing. You know what, well, this is a open competition. And, and yes, you, you can earn your spot and you can have a little bit of leeway, but we have other good players on the team. So if, you, if you're not performing, someone else is going to come in. Uh, a lot of other positions, receivers, running backs, uh, linemen, uh, defensive linemen, we, we play multiple guys. So you can do it at other positions. So we've opened up the competition. Uh, I'm not going to fault Jack at all. He works extremely hard uh, to become the best he, he can be. He's just, you know, he's feeling a little bit of pressure. And when he goes out there, you know, he's in playing against Ohio State and some other good teams, and he's pressing too hard because we have seen more consistency in practice. So he's just got to figure out a way to relax and go out there and get it done. When we look at our place kicker, Mitchell Finneran, he struggled for a couple games after performing extremely well early on. And we, you know, got back to – having as much competition as we can in practice. And we actually corrected a few things that I thought were going to help, and it has to this point. So, you know, kicking is something you just got to work at. He's got to get more consistent. He's got to play more confident. But, uh, you know, you could see multiple, uh, you know, kickers in the game if things aren't going the way we want. 
Back to the phone lines. Ryan calling in from Kentucky, checking in next. Ryan, welcome to the show. Hey, Coach. Uh, greetings from Bluegrass State. Yes, sir. Good to see. You. Good so, to talk okay. with you. Hey, good to talk with you. So obviously, I'm catching the show halfway through, and hopefully, you haven't already discussed this. If you did, uh, just let me know. But uh, obviously, the, with the news today of uh, the running back entering the transfer portal, um, it's safe to say that the running back position has been very kind to Purdue football this year. Just wanted to get your thoughts on why that is other than the injury report but um what are some things that um, i mean do you have some major concerns going into next year in regards to the running back position are there plans to take some of the better athletes on the roster and maybe develop them into running backs and just hear, hear your thoughts well i think when it comes to personnel we're always going to try to recruit the best running backs and get them to come to purdue and play for us um you know, we looked at the transfer portal, uh, you know, quite a bit uh, this past year, and we're very close on getting a couple that really have went somewhere else and done really well. We just could not, we could not get them, and uh, that's how recruiting works. Uh, we we did take a transfer from Indiana and, and Samson James that unfortunately is not eligible this year that uh, would have would have given us some experience back there, uh, but we weren't able to get him eligible. So we had Xander, and, uh, who has a ton of experience, and uh, unfortunately he got hurt. You know, he had surgery on his leg, and uh, those things happened, so it knocked him out. Then we uh, um, we had King Daru, who, uh, you know what, he, he has some things going on health-wise as well that we have to monitor and be on top of, and uh, this didn't pop up to this summer, and uh, I think we got it under check, but at any point in time, it could pop up again. And uh, you know what, he's, he's done a decent job. Uh, uh, Jaquez had some some personal things that uh, you know he had to deal with, and unfortunately, you know that that didn't. Uh, you know, we wanted to make him sh him healthy and, and get him mentally where he wanted to be, and uh, that was the most important thing to us. He, so he wasn't able to to play much for us, uh, and uh, you know, so you know, right now we just got to continue to to improve that depth. We've moved Jackson Anthony to running back. He's done some really good things. I think the last uh, three weeks we have improved the running game, and it has been. Uh, there and uh, and that's not all on the running backs. It's on coaching. We've we've, we've figured out a few other different ways to run, uh, and uh, I don't want to get into the details of it. But it's been it's done a decent job at this point, and we just got to continue to build on it. But we'll always try to do the the best job we can to recruit uh, young men to play running back, and then do the best job we can to uh, have a successful running game. I, I do think we have made some strides in that. We've got to continue uh, to work through it, uh, but. In, in the end, it's about scoring points and winning. And wherever our playmakers are, if it's at running back, tight end, or receivers, that's who needs to touch the ball. Thanks for the call, Ryan. Appreciate you. 1-888-246-2678 if you'd like to visit with Coach. We will take a break here on the Jeff Brom Radio Show. Still to come, Gus Hartwig and Brian, Branson Dean will join me here on the program. Coach Brom Show presented by Roman Automotive Group from Learfield. And to move a game back of Wisconsin in the standings. Back row, Demps, blocked. Wow. Solo blocked by Johnson in the middle. Match point, Purdue. And beating Wisconsin for the second time this season. What does Boyer and the Badgers have to say about it? Pounded over by Boyer on the serve. There's Johnson, nice. popped up by Demps. Hilly over to Ojo, rolls one over. Handled by the Boilermakers. Bump set, here's Newton. Stopped by Barnes. Hilly runs it to Red Key, reaching for it. It's near the net, it's tapped over by Bush. Demps waits for it, Hilly gets it back to Dana. This time more controlled, and it's popped up off the floor on match point by Hornick. Newton with the swipe, Demps with the stop. Red Key runs, tries to push down the line. Dug out Otek, left side, Newton, popped up Boyer. Oh, off the board. Barnes saves it, wow. and a free ball. Wisconsin, lucky to keep it alive. Newton for the match, Boyer with the stop. Brought back in play by Barnes. Here's Ojo shoving it over. Free ball, Purdue again on match points. Left side to Newton off of Barnes, and wow. Purdue does it again. The Boilermakers beat the Badgers for the second time this season, and Wisconsin has company atop the Big Ten standings. Now a three-way tie. How about the Boilers? How about the Boilers? <laughs> defensive player. He feels like defense is critical. 
saved a sub so that he has three back row players that can really do a good job in the backcourt to defend the ball. He's putting in another defensive player. He feels like defense is critical. Saved a sub so that he has three back row players that can really do a good job in the backcourt to defend the ball. Raven Colvin, gosh, I love that player. We are tied in the fourth set, not anymore. Purdue off the challenge has grabbed the 23-22 lead. Bush sealing the net perfectly. Allie Hornung again with Purdue on a 3-0 run, trying to win in four. Cook puts it down, and it is match point Purdue. Crowd staying in it, but they have to be stunned. McGraw keeps it alive. Miyabe. Newton for the win. It's dug by Samity out of play, and Purdue does it again. Uh, all kinds of people coming in and doing great, great things, <coughs> competing. <laughs> Just a tremendous win for us, and like we talked about, puts us in a better position, but it puts us one at a time. We got tomorrow off to rest and relax. And then uh, we'll get back at it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and we'll be ready. We've got three out of our last four of them. We're going to join. Great job. One, two, one, two, three. Welcome back to the Jeff Brom Radio Show, live tonight from Wolfie's Grill in West Lafayette. I'm Rob Blackman, filling in for Tim Newton. Tim on the road with Purdue women's basketball tonight as they play at Illinois State. Time for the Pro Boilers feature, where we look at how former Boilermaker student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. And tonight we talk basketball. Former Boilermaker Vincent Edwards still uh, playing some pro ball. He was a 2018 second round draft pick of the Houston Rockets. Vince currently plays for the Iowa Wolves of the NBA's G League in Des Moines, Iowa. I bring up Vince because for those who follow Purdue basketball, Purdue played Wright State last night at Mackey Arena. A Wright State's all-time leading scorer is Bill Edwards, the father of Vince Edwards. So nice to know Vince still playing some uh, professional basketball. Uh, joining me is Branson Dean, the Boilermaker defensive tackle, the junior from Indianapolis, played at Lawrence Central High School. Kind enough to join us here on the coaches show tonight. Branson, welcome. If I remember correctly, when you showed up on campus as a freshman, you were not a D tackle. You right. were a linebacker, right? Yes, sir. Kind of like a big physical Mike linebacker. Mm -hmm. you know, they tried to start me as. So, and you yeah. now, so how did you find your way to the de the defensive line? Well, I kind of just ate my way uh, <laughs> yes. down to three technique, um, <laughs> and kind of just trusted uh, the strength staff to put on some armor and being big enough and physical enough to move down there. It's been good. Do you know how many people would kill for that opportunity? <laughs> Just eat as much as you want so you can move into a different position. Exactly. How much weight have you put on, if you don't mind me asking, from the time you stepped on campus? Uh, I came out of high school about 235. Um, I'm about 277 now. Gotcha. So, okay. Yeah, about 40 pounds. All right. Well, so much for the freshman 15. You blew right past that, my friend. Right. Uh, talk to me about this defense. Look, I understand uh, Saturday showing at, uh, at Ohio State wasn't your best of the season, but – I'd like to think that was an outlier because, quite frankly, you guys have basically been in the top 15 all season long in scoring defense. After last year struggling so mightily to keep teams out of the end zone, what's been the difference this year? Why the, why the marked improvement on the defensive side of the football? Well, I kind of think it's a combination of us being a little bit older. Mm -hmm. um, I know a couple years ago we all kind of played um, young. Like uh, we had a bunch of freshmen and a bunch of sophomores on the defense. So now we're a little bit older. And uh, now with older guys, you can kind of set a standard. Yeah. And we've set a standard to where it's like, this is how we're going to play defense, we're going to play fast, we're going to play physical, and we're going to play aggressive. So we kind of set that standard and stuck to it. Uh, from a coaching standpoint, obviously a whole new coaching staff on the defensive side of the football. Is that something that they brought to the table as well? You're talking about there that uh, that, that intensity, that kind of cutting it loose and, and, and really, uh, I guess for lack of a better term, playing with your hair on fire? Yeah, a little bit, but um, it was kind of internal too. Mm -hmm. We just kind of really got tired of – um, being further down in the Big Ten and defense. So it's like it's kind of internal drive to just be one of those better groups. So it was kind of an internal thing. Well, what is it like uh, lining up on that D-line, knowing that George Karloftis is either to your right or to your left? He is such a game wrecker. He <laughs> impacts the game so mightily 
from the defensive side of the football. What's it like knowing you have one of those guys, uh, a guy like George Karloftis, lining up beside you every day? Well, it, it's kind of good for me because everybody everybody wants to get out and block him and make sure he's uh, contained. So yeah. uh, it leaves me a one on one a lot, and yeah. uh, me LJ KJ, we get one on ones a lot, and it's kind of like shoot, y'all go ahead and block him. We'll we'll dominate in other areas. <laughs> yeah, block him with three guys. Yeah, three then, guys, then. four guys, <laughs> running back, tight end. Yeah, he kind of gets it all. <laughs> I gotta tell you, you, you had a wonderful season, Branson. Nineteen tackles, three and a half sacks, uh, forced fumble. But maybe the highlight of your career, this is me speaking speaking for you, you get to speak for yourself here. Uh, you actually are in the Purdue record books as having scored, scored for Purdue. You have two points to your official collegiate credit because you had that safety last year against Rutgers, right? Was yep. that the highlight of the career, get, yeah. uh, getting a two-pointer? Right. That was kind of one of my favorite plays uh, as a Boilermaker. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty cool. And uh, so – I mean, look, David Bell scores a lot, but, I mean, you can always say, hey, at exactly. least I have two. Uh, yeah, there ain't points. too many safeties going around. <laughs> yeah, no, there, there are not. <laughs> uh, final question for Branson Dean, the defensive tackle from Indianapolis. Uh, had a great career at Lawrence Central High School and now, of course, here playing for our Boilermakers. What does it take to get this team back on track and get back to the winning ways with not only Northwestern but certainly Indiana coming up in two weeks, these final two weeks of the regular season? How, uh, how are you guys planning to get, the, get this thing back and rolling again? Just kind of getting back on track, um, realizing that we've set a standard, and now uh, at the last part of the season going into next year, we have to exceed that standard. Mm -hmm. And um, and we do it the same way we've been doing it all year, play fast, play physical, and play aggressive. We played it behind a line of scrimmage. So just getting back to that, um, getting back to our roots, we'll be fine. I would agree. Branson yeah. Dean, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you for Ladies having me. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Branson <laughs> Dean, the D-tackle, the junior, joining us here on the program. More on the Jeff Brom Show when we come back. Offensive lineman Gus Hartwig joins me next. This is Boilermaker Football from Learfield. For one Another brilliant performance against a top-ranked team. I'm glad to hear that she's doing well today. David Bell breaks free, and Bell will get it out to about the 47-yard line for a first. Horvath gets the carry and he'll have a Purdue first down. Kind of the key that makes all the different looks that they'll throw at the opposing defense makes them difficult. Second six, quickly to the outside, and Wright's able to shake free for a moment and has the first down. So they bring it back, a second and ten, saying that was an incompletion. O'Connell, this is it! Jackson Anthrop, touchdown, Boilermakers! Things to give those passers some different looks. Second and two just goes underneath the Doru and Doru weaving his way out to the 47 yard line. Before. Second and seven play action. O'Connell downfield strike and complete to Milton Wright. And the big mistake that the offense made, he wasn't even on the field for it. Mm -hmm. That was Jack Plummer who came in for that one play. Corner of the end zone. Wow! Touchdown! Thompson. Good job up front by Purdue as Williams was driven back by Karloftis. A legend now amongst some of the guys on the internet, that's for sure. Third and ten and the completion to TJ Sheffield. They can look at this and say, yeah, they're super dynamic, but there have been some self-inflicted mistakes that we made as well. O'Connell lost the end zone and he gets it with Milton Wright. O'Connell swings it to Horvath. Horvath squaring those shoulders. He's been so productive this year. First and goal. And they're going to bring it in for a score. Did you just say as Jackson answer crosses the goal line? Back boy to maker fans, this is the Jeff Brom Radio Show live tonight at Wolfie's Grill. Right here on the Wabash Landing in West Lafayette. Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Ross Age Stadium. Nice visiting with Branson Dean just a moment ago from the defensive side of the football. Now let's flip over to the offensive side. We'll stay in the interior lineman category, though. How about that? Center Gus Hartwig from Zionsville is joining me here on the program. 
I told Gus before we uh, open up the microphones here, I actually live in Zionsville, so I'm already a big fan of Gus's. I watched him play a ton in, of, of high school football in Zionsville. And how about your Zionsville Eagles still alive in the state tournament in the semi-state this coming Friday night, partner? Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Playing at, uh, at Michigan City Friday night. Good luck to all the football teams involved in semi-state action this, uh, this coming weekend around the great state of Indiana. All right, Gus, you are a, uh, you are uh, put yourself in a very unique position as a Boilermaker. Starting last year as a true freshman on the offensive line, last time that had happened, 2008. Yeah. To hear that phrase, what does that mean to you to know that you're a part of some really elite company? It's awesome just knowing the work that I had to do to get to that point and knowing the guys who tried to do that and or did that at some point. And it's really cool like getting the opportunity as a true freshman to be able to go and play and just kind of now kind of looking at it back last year, just seeing how I – played last year just not really knowing what I was doing as much and this year how I've been able to get better from learn from what I did last year and and, and I would add to this you know degree of diff difficulty goes up a couple of notches because playing center you're in far, involved with so many things as far as the line calls and those kind of things right so did, uh, from a mental standpoint well, I, I, let me ask the, this way was it more challenging did you think from a mental aspect or the physical aspect being thrown in there and playing right away as a freshman uh, it was probably the mental aspect just kind of the how everything works, where we're going, how the plays and learning all that. And then after learning that, then trying to go do it mm -hmm. at the speed of how we're trying to do it and how quickly we're trying to run plays. Uh, not only did uh, Gus, not only was he in the starting lineup this year, he was, or last year, I beg your pardon, he was honorable mention all Big Ten as well. I probably need to get that, uh, that out there. When you were coming out of high school that summer, preparing for that first season last year at Purdue, and obviously an odd season because of COVID, we only played six games, but – did you think coming in that, hey, I might have a chance here. I could be a guy that either is in the starting lineup or a part of the rotation very early in my career. I knew I had a had a chance, but I think everybody kind of thinks they have a chance. And then when they get here, it's kind of like, okay, maybe not. And <laughs> right. It kind of opened up. It was like, okay, kind of camp came. We were going. And I was kind of getting a couple reps here and there. And I was like, okay, like I can do this. Just kind of get the confidence of playing in the Big Ten. Kind of learn from all that. And it's kind of get the confidence, like, okay, I can do this. And it's like, yeah, I can, I can kind of play at this level. Uh, I, unfortunately, I'll have to admit, I'm a, I'm a bad fan. I go to a ton of Zionsville high school football games. I can't remember if Zionsville was a shotgun team or under center team. And I bring that up because that can be such a tough transition as a center, being a shotgun snapper, as Purdue is in most of the time. What about that transition for you? Yeah, high school, we were all shotgun. Like, I'd, I'd never taken a under center rep in a game until, <laughs> really? until last year against Illinois. <laughs> So okay, so you were well versed in that uh, in that uh, that that special skill, I guess. Uh, okay, so your offensive line, Coach Brahm has talked a little bit about this, and this this includes the Ohio State game too here, partner. But really, the last three or four weeks, you guys are really clicking against Ohio State. Not only was Aiden O'Connell he was not sacked, he wasn't even touched. What is it that you're doing differently that maybe we're doing from earlier in the season that has brought you guys to such a level of effectiveness of not only protecting the passer but really getting the running game going and, quite frankly, making life very easy on Aiden? Uh, I think what we've kind of done, the mentality we've had the last couple of weeks is we're going to kind of pick it up another level. We're going to try and do that a little bit extra, do everything we got to do to just get the job done and really the mentality and then kind of just we're going and this is what we're going to do and kind of communicating this is what we're doing, this is how we're going to do it. And Coach Brown's done a good job kind of putting us in good positions to being able to execute that way. Well, you guys have been uh, pretty dominant the last four or five weeks of the season. There's no doubt about that. Gus, thank you for joining us. Good luck Saturday at Northwestern. Thank you. There he is, everyone. Gus Hartwig, the sophomore from Zionsville. Coach Brom rejoins me when we come back to the Jeff Brom Show, presented by the Rorman Automotive Group. This is Boilermaker Football from Learfield. Things that makes this team so dangerous. See, they can score in transition. They can pound it inside. They shoot the three over 40%. And look at the drop right there to Edie program that knows success. It's also Scott Nagy talked to us about this is a tough place for us to find it. What a pass. Ivy on the step through had it knocked away. And there is Williams with the putback and the foul. Almost every look we have seen tonight from Wright State has been contested. There is Edie with the two-hand jam. By Stefanovic. And another miss. He may very well double both of those, if not more, this season. 
Thompson leaves it off for Stefanovic, and he rims in another. That's back-to-back -back three. Not having confidence knocking down those shots. Grant Basile shot 48% from downtown last year. How about that fadeaway from Travion Williams showing a little finesse. Dumps it down to Travion Williams. Going to work on Basile, and he forces an errant pass from Basile, and now Ivy on the break. Step through to the cup and lays it in. And now Hunter in the front court jams it all. At Mackey Arena in the first half. And another soft touch of the paint. And first another offensive rebound. Ivy on the drive, are you kidding me? Their eighth largest halftime lead in program history at 34 points. How about that backdoor cut and the feed from Travion Williams? In and out from Morton, a third opportunity for Williams. Oh, that's just a grown man move. Presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brom Radio Show, proud partner of Purdue Athletics, Rohrman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. Just to follow up on that uh, conversation a moment ago with Gus, how good Purdue's been offensively in the last, well, just go three weeks. If my numbers are correct, Aiden O'Connell, 75% completion percentage, over 1,100 yards passing, nine touchdowns, zero picks in the last three games. Coach Brown, what is it about your offense that it is clicking on all cylinders right now? Well, it's a lot of things. As you know, a lot of things go into having some success, but you know, we've worked hard to try to just uh, utilize Aiden's talents uh, while he's in there, uh, improve the running game a little bit, um, be more efficient on offense, uh, try to figure out a way to have less negative plays and less sacks and less turnovers. And I think we've we've done a decent job uh, here lately of doing that. Now every week's a new challenge and a new game, and you've got to keep it going. But I do think that, uh, you know, the formula we've been using lately uh, has been okay, and, and our guys are executing. They feel comfortable with it. Uh, Aiden uh, has been playing at a high level, distributing the ball to all of our playmakers, and we've just, you know, gotten better. So I think it's just important that, you know, you keep pressing forward. Every week's a, a new game and a new challenge, and sometimes uh, teams will start to take away different things. You've got to be able to adjust. But I just think we've been able to adjust as the season's gone on uh, through to a lot of a lot of hard work by our coaches and our players of you know, adapting to a few changes here and there to help us get better. One final segment with Coach Brom. When we come back, we are going to talk about that game at Wrigley Field Saturday on the other side of this break. It's the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rohrman Automotive Group from Learfield. Ball played through. Steffens. Patrick able to disrupt. Ball is kicked off of Patrick and recovered by Bova. Away by the defense. In Chicago, they play defense per the Ramblers. And that ball is dangerous. Opportunity and just outside. They find Griffith. Griffith 1v1. Uses the scissor move. Gets free. Left foot. Fires it off. And it's in! The Boilermakers are going to the second round of the NCAA Women's College Cup. Off of the left foot of Sarah Griffith, a brilliant curving shot. The game of basketball has always meant more here, and it's always meant everything to me. It's been my passion, my obsession, my first love, and the thing I've always been best at. Gerald's averaging five and a half assists a game. And Gerald gets the offensive board, puts it right back up and in. I learned something along the, the individual way. Individual honors really mean nothing to me. If you surround yourself with greatness, you can become great yourself. No one can take the state championship away from us, and it's just awesome. A state title, Indiana Miss Basketball, Big Ten champion, the Elite Eight, the WNBA, national championship, all these dreams realized. Basketball has taken me around the world, and now it's brought me back home. Back to the greatest school in the greatest state in the country, the Boilermaker States. Now it's time for the next chapter, for new dreams and a return to greatness. The head coach for your Boilermakers, Katie Gerald.
bonus ride, y'all. Final segment here of the Coach Jeff Brom Radio Show. Again, thanks for joining us. And remember, next week's show is Tuesday night, Tuesday night to talk Boilermaker football. All right, Coach, 12 noon Saturday, Purdue and Northwestern. The Cats have gotten us six out of the last seven times we have played. What is it with Northwestern, and how can we turn the tables on them this time around? Well, I think uh, Coach Fitzgerald does a really good job. Uh, you know, they play, play disciplined football. They don't turn the ball over. They run the ball, control possessions. Uh, they're stout up front on both sides of the ball, but definitely the D-line. Uh, they normally have really good linebackers. They attack downhill, and they try, to, try not to give up the big plays. So those have been challenges for us, and we have not beat them at their own game, meaning we've normally had more turnovers, and we've normally done the small things not as good as them. So we're going to have to play efficient football, and we've talked about it all week. Our guys understand uh, what we're going to have to do in order to, to find a way to win, and that uh, these guys have had our number lately. So we've got to figure out – figure out a way to just be consistent uh, when we take the field, to start fast, uh, you know, to be aggressive but yet sound in what we're doing and not give up easy plays and not give them anything. Uh, so, you know, a lot of these big games, if you can win the turnover battle and, and, and do those things correctly, you'll have a chance. Final 60 seconds here, Coach. The uniqueness of this game, you mentioned both teams will be on the same sideline, which is obviously different. Any other unique parts of the game that maybe our fans will, will notice or, or no? Well, I just think uh, two teams on the same sideline. Uh, one team has from the 45 to the five-yard line, the other with the 45 to the five. And when you get in one end zone, it's going to be different. Uh, you know, team signaling plays in and things like that. But yeah. I think as far as watching the game, it's just going to, you know, be a different venue where you're going to be a little bit flatter in your seats uh, and where you're at. But, uh, you know, the uh, historic aspect of playing in Wrigley, I think, will just be fun because there's just going to be a lot of different elements uh, to that field that you're going to be able to watch the game from. And uh, what a what an experience for the players and the coaches to be a part of this, something they'll talk about uh, for the rest of their lives. Coach Brom, thanks so much, and good luck Saturday at Northwestern. Okay, thank you. Purdue head coach Jeff Brom joining us here, everyone. Uh, it's a busy weekend here on the Boilermaker Radio Network. Think about this. Coming up Saturday, we have Boilermaker football, 11 a.m. for our broadcast time here on the Purdue Radio Network with a 12 noon kick with Purdue and Northwestern. And then when football goes final and the postgame show is finished from Wrigley Field, we'll throw it out to Uncasville, Connecticut for Purdue basketball because the basketball team's playing at 4 o'clock on Saturday against North Carolina in the Hall of Fame tip-off classic. So it's going to be a busy day here on the radio network. Football, noon and then basketball tipping at four. So uh, make sure you're nice and comfortable on Saturday and uh, have yourself a chance to enjoy a lot of Purdue uh, athletics going on the uh, on the radio dial this coming weekend. Big thanks to Ray Klabmeyer, who uh, helped us out uh, earlier here this evening as our in-studio engineer. Thanks to Wes Scott, who helped engineer on site. Nate Strobe also helping us as well. And we appreciate all of you, our fans, joining us. For Coach Brom and for Branson Dean and Gus Hartwig, I'm Rob Blackman. Remember, next Tuesday night for the Jeff Brom Radio Show. Good night, everyone.